I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, we're at that period of the morning where it is time for member statements. And the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. The return to school and the need for smaller class sizes that allow for safe physical distancing is the number one concern I've heard from parents, students, and education workers. While education workers and boards scramble to get everything in place for in-person and virtual learning, the Ford government has taken a back seat and watches the chaos around them, chaos that they created. Yesterday, a constituent said that when his son woke up for virtual first period class, he still hadn't been provided a schedule or told what class he was about to participate in. Why is that? Teachers from OSSTF in Windsor say it's because very few teachers have been assigned to virtual classes yet. It's chaotic for education workers who have no idea how to prepare and for the students who have no idea what to expect. Students with disabilities are being left behind without individualized lesson plans or accessible formats that meet their specific needs. COVID cases are going up, and if the government doesn't act quickly to reduce class sizes, our kids are going to get sick or lose another school year. Ontarians are looking for reassurance and for action. While the Ford government sits on $6.7 billion in unused COVID relief money, families are struggling. To my constituents, it is clear that this Conservative government is Order, focused please. on setting the stage for private schools, not investing in our public education system. On behalf of the people in Windsor West, I again ask the government to invest the funding and resources needed to ensure schools run smoothly and safely for our kids and education workers. And I ask the members on the other side to actually listen to what I'm saying rather than having loud side conversation. Thank you. Members on both sides of the House, when we agreed to do statements at this time, it was understood that we would give our undivided attention to those who had the floor and were recognized to speak. So please, listen to what is being said. Member statements, the member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> I'm pleased to rise today and speak about another important investment by the Ontario government, Sarnia Lambton. Yesterday, the Minister of Health announced new investments of $175 million this year to address critical upgrades, repairs and maintenance in 129 hospitals across this province. I'm extremely pleased to share that as a part of that announcement by the Minister of Health, Sarnia Lambton's Blue Water Health will receive $2,446,000 through the Health Infrastructure Renewal Fund, otherwise known as HERF. A critical infrastructure project at both the Sarnia campus and Charlotte Eleanor Englehart Hospital in Petroya. This important investment is in addition to nearly $1.8 million in health infrastructure renewal funding that Blue Water Health received in 2019. I'm very proud that our government is acting on its plan to build a connected and sustainable health care system centered around the needs of patients. Renewing and modernizing hospital infrastructure is one of the more examples of how the Ford government is working towards ensuring the residents of Sarnia Lampton have the health care services they depend on today and in the future. Mr. Speaker, this is terrific investment by the province and great news for everyone in Sarnia Lampton. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. August 6, 2020 was an awful day for people with disabilities in Ontario. Why? because the Premier of this province made excuses for cancelling a $100 a month benefit during COVID for people on the Ontario Disability Support Program. He said, if you're healthy, get a job. And he went further. He said those on ODSP and SERP at the same time were a few hundred dollars a month ahead. Fact check. A tiny minority of people on the ODSP collect the SERB because they are too disabled to have full-time paid employment. But Speaker, what was the Premier of this province actually saying? That disabled, immunocompromised people should go find paid employment during a pandemic? That they should risk their lives for billionaire owners like Loblaws? Was that truly the point the Premier was attempting to make? Speaker, people with disabilities in this province live in poverty, and it's because of legislation this House puts into place. They deserve so much better. Poverty is expensive for the province of Ontario. Studies tell us it costs as much as $33 billion a year, and it's humiliating. Speaker, on a personal note, I said something and did something that I apologized to the Premier for last December. But it's time for him to apologize to people with disabilities in this province for what he said. 
and to restore the $100 a month they urgently need. Premier, I await your reply. Order. Oh, there goes the minister. Cheers. Member statements. Okay. Member statements. Member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I believe that there's a place in this chamber to recognize those Ontario residents who have accomplished great things. Regretfully, the COVID pandemic has forced a cancellation of many events and celebrations across Ontario. Over the years, the Whitby Sports Hall of Fame has honoured many homegrown athletes and sports stars. But, Speaker, after 22 years, the Whitby Sports Hall of Fame has delayed its dinner honouring new inductees in 2021. This dinner, Speaker, has been an opportunity to celebrate and recognize the achievements of our talented and hardworking athletes. Speaker, we've seen so many great athletes from Whitby represent our community, our province, and our country at the highest levels. And this dinner has been an opportunity for their parents, neighbours, childhood coaches, and friends to honour their outstanding athletic accomplishments. Speaker, I'm pleased uh, this morning to uh, congratulate Gil Neuendijk, Sean Williams, and Carolyn Mountjoy for their now soon-to-be induction into the Whitby Sports Hall of Fame and Whitby history. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for weeks, parents, educators, and public health experts have raised concerns with government plans for a safe return to school reopening. Concerns over crowded classrooms, poor ventilations in schools, and especially in particular the many aging schools that are in our community of York Southwestern, how children are to be safely transported, how safe hygiene can be maintained, and the lack of childcare availability for working parents were just some of the issues I heard about during our town hall meeting on September 3rd. Mr. Speaker, the smaller class sizes in schools with proper ventilations and access to cleaning supplies and personal protective equipment is the only way to have hope of our schools being safe. A special needs children have unique needs and they have been left behind during the past few months of remote learning. Mr. Speaker, we need a responsibility plan. We need a responsible plan that does not jeopardize the efforts we have made the last several months coping during this pandemic. I believe all Ontarians deserve health care. They can count on high quality senior care and public schools that give all of our children a great start. COVID has been very stressful for economic, social, and health reasons. The safety of our children to continue their education in the securest of conditions should be always be a top priority. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Guelph. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to ask the government to reject a proposed mining exploration permit that would damage Wolf Lake, the largest old growth red pine forest in the world. I love Wolf Lake. I love the ancient forests. I love the blue water. As a matter of fact, I took my daughter there this summer on our annual daddy daughter canoe trip. Only 1.2% of old growth red pine forests remain, making them critically endangered. This is what makes Wolf Lake such a special place, an irreplaceable ecological gem. And that is why former Premier Mike Harris promised to make it a provincial park, but existing mining claims prevented him from doing it. And the Liberal government dealt a blow to Wolf Lake in 2012 when they renewed the leases on those mining claims. And friends at Tomogamy were heartbroken last fall when the Ford government allowed unconditional mining exploration permits in Wolf Lake. Now there are another, another application for mining permit. Speaker, I support mining. We need mining. But enough is enough. Wolf Lake is an irreplaceable ecological gem, and sometimes you just have to say no to protect the places we love. Now is one of those times. 
Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to rise today to acknowledge the recent measures to support and encourage women to enter the skilled trades and initiatives from members of, in my riding that are contributing to the advancement of gender equality. Our province will be confronting a challenge where there will be more skilled trade jobs than people to fill them. A significant group that will be essential to reverse this trend is women. The recently announced funding to the Provincial Building and Construction Trades Council of Ontario is encouraging and will be used to support women in the skilled trades. It is a privilege also in my riding of Oakville that the Oakville District Council of Leuna is based. This union, whose members are building our infrastructure, has been instrumental at supporting women who are joining the trades. Leuna has implemented the Women in the Trades program with private sector partners such as ACON. I want to thank Leuna for their leadership in breaking barriers in the skilled trades. I would also like to bring attention to an event in Oakville next week that will be occurring at the end on September 23rd. I will be participating in the premiere of the Hollywood movie Misbehavior, which is the story of Oakville resident Jennifer Houston, and will be taking place at the local movie theatre film.ca. Notably, some of the proceeds raised from the ticket sales will be going to Plan Canada's Because I'm a Girl campaign, which is an admirable organization that supports gender equality in Canada and internationally. The fundamental objective of gender equality is one that I fully stand behind. I'm excited for this event on the 23rd of September. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Residents in my riding of Toronto Centre are pleading with this government to reverse their suspension of local noise bylaws. From 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, construction has continued unabated on developments right next door to where people live. The persistent noise is making it impossible for nearby residents to get a good night's sleep. Speaker, my constituents are exhausted. I've heard from residents with medical conditions who are suffering from headaches because of the persistent and prolonged noise. I've also heard from people who've had to work from home because of COVID-19 and are struggling to keep it all together with constant noise disruptions in the background of their Zoom meetings and phone calls. People in my community are already being asked to take on the monumental task of juggling work and childcare from home in a global pandemic, and the constant noise is making an already diff difficult situation simply unbearable. People in my community are burnt out. They are angry that this government would take advantage of an emergency measure to give their developer friends an 18-month extension on construction hours. In the interest of the health and the quality of life of the people in my community, I'm calling on this Conservative government to immediately roll back the extension on construction hours and restore reasonable noise limits in our neighbourhoods. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next member for Burlington. Thanks so much, Speaker. Speaker, today six children in Canada will be diagnosed with cancer. And while childhood cancers account for less than 1% of all cancers diagnosed, it takes a significant toll on families. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Across Ontario, people are building support, raising funds, and creating awareness of childhood cancers. The Maggie Project, sponsored by South Dorchester residents Dave and Maureen Jenkins, honors their daughter, Maggie, who died at 12, and helps keep her memory alive while promoting research, cures, and treatments. The gold ribbon is the international symbol of childhood cancer awareness. Dave and Maureen have once again sent gold ribbon pins for us to wear in the legislature. All month long, Childhood Cancer Canada and the Coast and Coast Against Cancer Foundations are lighting up 37 landmarks across the country, including the CN Tower, Niagara Falls, and Minister Urich's favourite, Jumbo the Elephant, in St. Thomas. Here in Burlington, Halton Regional Police Officers Tamara and Jeff Sandy created Chase's Gift, a charitable organization inspired by the support they received during their son Chase's battle with cancer. Speaker, a child with cancer needs the help of five blood donors to support their care. That's why Canadian Blood Services is also encouraging Ontarians to donate blood this morning in honour of child affected by childhood cancer. Together, we can support these children and their families on their journey. Thanks so much, Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> member Statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, it's with a heavy heart that I rise today. On August 13, 2020, Judith Ann Campbell came to the end of her road, paved with passion, generosity, and a solid commitment to giving back to her beloved community of Sitzville. Judith Campbell was the president of the Sitzville Legion Branch 618. I first met her years ago when I began campaigning, and as soon as I met her, I was in immediate awe of this short, spunky, tough, and very formidable woman. As president of the Sitzville Legion, she made sure that the Legion was well involved in the community, and in fact, the Sitzville Legion is a community staple. Carleton has 10 Remembrance Day ceremonies, Mr. Speaker, staggered over a three-week period. But every year for Remembrance Day, I would always end it in Stittsville. It would always be a chilly day, and the ceremony was outdoors. Last year, it was actually snowing. But about 300 or 400 of us would gather there without fail to honour our veterans and our Legion. And afterwards, we would all go back to the Stittsville Legion for some amazing home-cooked clan chowder and chili. I would always spend that time catching up and chatting with Judy as we warmed our fingers over uh, with hot bowls of chili. My deepest condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of Judith Ann Campbell, as well as the Stittsville Legion Branch 613. Remembrance Day won't be the same without her this year, but I know that Barb and the rest of the Legion will do Judy proud. Thank you. Maybe a bit late, but I'm going to remind the members that when we're in member statements, I would ask you to keep your private conversations as quiet as possible so that we can hear the member who has the floor.